Everybody's Chris from Prepared Mind 101, still out here shooting videos, and today we're going to do something I don't do that often. Uh, <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> Park River. Um, <laughs> I don't, uh, with the exception of the obvious, I don't always, you know, review knives from the same company so close together. It just so happened that after I bought that Topps Operator 7, I stumbled across this knife and I asked Topps if I could review it because I'm like, that looks fantastic. And then about the same time is when the knife connection set just out of the blue said, hey, you want to do that Anaconda? So we kind of ended up with a sudden influx of a lot of Topps. But this is a knife from Topps that I was really excited, honestly excited that I wanted to review because I just thought it looked freaking cool. And this is the Topps Backpackers Bowie. This is a very interesting knife. And there's a lot of little details about this knife that I want to break down and talk about. So if you want to find out more about this one, which is not a giveaway, sorry. Uh, come on, I just gave away a freaking anaconda. Uh, you, you, you're going to have to pry this magical handle out of my cold, dead hands. But if you want to find out more about this knife, don't go away. So they call this the Backpackers Bowie, Bowie, because their design intention was they wanted to make a, a smallish fixed blade knife that was still stout, strong, and capable for people that aren't going to weigh themselves down with a lot of tools like backpackers. This thing is an ergonomic work of art. It looks cool. It, you know, well, some people may not think it looks cool. They may think that handle looks weird, but you won't worry about what it looks like when it's in your hand. Now granted, I have hands that can wear medium or large gloves. It's right there in the middle. So if you've got those big bear paw hands, this probably isn't going to work for you. Keep that in mind. My hands are pretty average. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this thing, run down the specs, and we'll talk about the features. Okay, if you happen to uh, watch the last video on the Anaconda, that bird is still over there blowing on that rape whistle. Uh, it's really starting to bug me. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about this. So I printed off some of the stuff that, so I'm getting it straight from the manufacturer. You know, and they and they basically. Characteristic clip point blades of a, of a Bowie, you know, they provide for a lot of versatility and a wide range of users. However, most Bowie knives are on the larger side. Uh, they wanted to make something for, called the Backpacker's Bowie for a shorter version that even a backpacker would carry. You know, because the backpacker people, like the real backpacker people, uh, or I, I call them ounce Nazis, where <laughs> everything is like, got to be down to like the lowest possible ounce you know it's got to be something that does a lot for the weight so you've got the obvious notch and I know notches like that turn a lot of people off but hey it's there so they say that this is for you know lifting hot pots off the fire which yes that is a very useful option uh, I tend to use a multi-tool for that but if I had this it would definitely be uh, easier and more secure and it also says for breaking wire. I don't know exactly how many times you would have to break wire or how that even works with that notch. I So let's just call it a, a pot lifter. Uh, it also says that uh, tops will sharpen this forward swedge upon request. Uh, I don't know why you would want that uh, it's, uh, unless you're using the, the uh, Andy Tran uh, thought process of his knife where he just considered that that upper forward uh, swedge being sharpened to be a secondary uh, blade. So talking about the sheath first, you've got a Kydex sheath with a spring clip that does rotate 360 degrees. 
so it, it's facing any direction you need it to face what I like about it is this is something that if I'm just if I just want it I can just clip it on the outside of my pants pocket it has an overall length of 8.25 inches the blade length is four and a half inches the blade thickness is 0.16 the blade steel is 1095 it's got a tumbled finish green canvas micarta handles it is 9.7 ounces and made in the USA by Topps Knives So the biggest thing, you know, like I, I when I got this and I did the little teaser video on Instagram, the one thing I kept doing over and over is just wanting to wrap my hands around that handle. It's like they took a piece of molding clay and just squeezed it. So you've got a very secure, very comfortable grip. I like the jimping is not overly aggressive and I like that it, it's kind of recessed into the spine the shape of the blade I think just looks cool and I love the freaking tumbled finish I like the guard right there because there are people out there that that really fuss about guards because I don't know stabbing trees is a thing I don't know why but <laughs> I get told all the time JX5 needs a guard why for when you stab things I'm like, what are you going to stab with a freaking JX-5? That's not what it's for. But hey, you might want to stab a tree with this, so it's good that it has that guard. I really like the direction the Tops has been going, you know, with their blade designs and their finishes and, you know, the different handles. You know, as apart from the old days when everything was, you know, very much like that Anaconda that we just reviewed. I think this is going to be a, a love it or hate it knife, but I think a lot more people would like it if they picked it up. I think it looks cool. I love the freaking handle in this position. It just It just wants to freaking be used. So let's use it. Since I don't need my notes anymore, uh, paper when you go out in the woods for a little bit and it's been damp, it starts to get damp itself, so it kind of makes hard for the the holding it cut test but just checking out feeling the, the blade and it does come very sharp I'll try up here but it's just gonna bend on me because it's getting damp yeah personally this is just my my preference for everything and they know this they, they've heard it before I think with with stuff like this especially this size I mean if they did with this like they did with the Tam and Boca Puko because on the Tam and Boca Puko they actually did uh, heat treat the edge and heat treat the spine so it did have a usable uh, sharp spine because to me that's just an area right there I can use for more things scraping my ferrod you know, sh you know fine shavings and whatnot but it is what it is and we can't have sharp spines on everything the rest of the knife is so cool I can let that go so looking in my uh, VanQuest pack over there, see if I had anything on me to size compare it to. Uh, it is slightly bigger than the Jessmic C, that's the smaller one. So it's around about in that that size range and that, that intended use. So I want to see how that edge feels. And I'm telling you, if your hands are the same size as mine, this position feels great now, a lot of people do feather sticks differently than I do I used to do that I used to do what a lot of people did just go straight down but I just kind of picked up the habit of going this way you know from my own stuff from the Jessmic and now I kind of do that with everything no matter what knife it is so let's try and get some finer stuff. A lot of control there. I don't have any sharp edges on this because I just picked it up.
Okay, that does feel nice. What you're gonna do with this nine times out of 10 is cut stuff. I know, I know that's like, what are we talking about cut stuff? You're supposed to do all sorts of things with it. Now, primary purpose of a knife is to cut stuff. And that's what you're mostly gonna be doing with this. You're not gonna choose this to be your bushcraft knife. You're not gonna choose this to be your survival knife. This is an EDC friendly size. That is just good stout and it, it feels good. It looks good, feels good. I don't know what the X27B on here means. Sounds like an Air Force drone to me. But, I don't know. I just like this one. Maybe you don't, and, and that's okay. You know, the street price on these are about 120 bucks. Uh, I think with you know the new tops, the new finish, and the new sheaths, and the size and all that, I think that's a pretty, pretty fair price for a USA-made uh, knife. If it works for you, great. If not, well, on this channel, there's a very high likelihood that I'm going to review another knife pretty soon. So, if this one don't work for you, you know, just hold your breath for five seconds, and there'll be another one here in a minute. But I have, even though I'm not using it for backpacking, I've just been using this a lot every day. Just clipped in my pants. And it's just something about that, that handle and the ergonomics that just really, really appeals to me. So when it comes to this particular knife, uh, you know, and, and what people generally try to think about is, you know, sometimes a knife is really just a knife. You know, this one cuts stuff and lifts hot pots off of the fires. It's not a bush crafter. It's not a fighting knife, it's not a survival knife, but it's a cool knife and it's a good stout fixed blade. So if you like it, great. If you don't, you don't. Um, I happen to like it, that's why I wanted to review it. So if this does interest you, if you like this one, uh, I'll put links to some places that you can get it in the description box below because I did note it. You know, obviously I talk about DLT a lot, but when I just got the last, I think it was the last email, Anyway, I, I saw that this was listed under new arrivals. So uh, since it didn't come from DLT and actually came from Tops themselves, I wasn't sure yet who actually was carrying it. So I'll put a couple links uh, for this in the description box below. But yeah, I like it. So I'm gonna keep using it. I don't care what you say. So there you go, Christian prepared my 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click a like, share, and subscribe. I already talked about the links a second ago. You heard me, right? But they're in that direction if, if you're still looking for them. They're not up there. They're down there. Uh, I'll be back with another video here soon. So we'll see you then.